Do you desire to develop more effective communication skills? Do you find it difficult to communicate on a deeper level with people you live with or people you love? Are you wanting to reopen communication channels with someone that have been closed in the past? If so, keep watching as I begin my three-part communication series right now. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Danielle and I'm so glad you joined me today. Today kicks off my three-part series on communication where for the next three weeks I'll be talking all about communication, why it's important, the benefits of good communication, how to become a more effective communicator, but also why it's important to become more authentic and transparent when you communicate in helping you enhance your relationships and being able to communicate on a deeper, more meaningful and intimate level with those around you. If you like videos that encourage you, motivate you, and inspire you to become the best version of yourself you can be, physically, emotionally, and mentally, then please subscribe to my channel. I do upload videos every Monday, but sometimes more often, so if you hit the bell button, you'll be sure never to miss a video. Now, the first thing I do wanna talk about is communication skills and our children. So even if you're not a parent, this does still apply to you because whether you have a niece or a nephew or a neighbor or you're a teacher, if you have children in your life in some capacity, this applies to you because I think it's really important that we look at this for a variety of different reasons. I firmly believe that if children can learn good communication skills, it's one of the primary building blocks that really helps them become successful in adult life and our children are the future of our country so that's why it is really so important and our children do watch us they learn communication skills by what they observe by the way they're talked to by what they see so it's really important when you come into contact with any children in your life that you do keep that in mind and you realize how important this is for them in developing their self-image their confidence their self-esteem and helping them enhance and grow and mature in their social skills it is really important and as you mature into adult life the adults that really have had and have learned good communication skills really do so much better if you're an adult that maybe didn't learn good communication skills as a child then you need to learn that now and you can absolutely it's never too late to learn that so if you have a child in your life in some capacity remember that they are watching you they are listening to you they are learning from their interactions with you so it's really important that you remember how important communication skills are in the life of a child so with that being said let's move on to the adults that are probably watching this video and let's talk about the benefits of good communication and why it's so important now good communication plays roles in so many different facets of your life. Typically, you find a lot of communication written about and a lot of videos on communication in regards to work life or business, things like that. And it certainly is important. It plays a big role in helping you get a promotion at work or helping you get a job or communicating during a job interview. But really the focus of my video is really going to help you grow your interpersonal relationships through better communication, which can also serve you in a lot of different other capacities as well. There's so many benefits to becoming a more effective communicator. When you learn how to communicate more effectively, you will find that you develop more confidence. You'll find that you're more productive professionally and personally. You'll find that your interpersonal relationships will improve greatly. You're able to diffuse conflict more. You're also going to be able to problem solve much easier. And let me give, give you an example of what I mean by this. Oftentimes when I train clients and they come in and they tell me that they have a problem that they're struggling with or a situation that they have that they don't know what to do, I will sit down with them and have them just tell me about the problem or situation. And I find oftentimes through them just being able to talk through the situation without me saying anything, judging or giving any advice, they are able to come up with their own solution. Just the opportunity to talk about it out loud and communicate what they're struggling with really affords them the opportunity to think more about it and think it through as they talk about it out loud. Communication is really key for problem solving and you will find that it will help you a lot in that regard. Becoming a good communicator will also help you develop, deepen and nurture better relationships in your life because when you communicate well, you create an environment based on stability and support when people know that they can count on you to communicate what it is you wanna say in a succinct, to the point way that is non-threatening, that is not negative, that is well-spoken and clearly understood, they know what to expect from you, and they're more open to hearing what you have to say. 
So how do we learn to communicate more effectively? There's five tips I'm gonna give you that I think are really important in helping you learn how to communicate more effectively. They are to look, listen, validate, ask, and repeat. I'll say it again. Look, listen, validate, ask, and repeat. Let's go over each one of those things individually. The first thing is look. When you want to have more effective communication with someone, you really wanna make sure that you're looking at them. You wanna pay attention to them. Eye contact is really important here. You wanna make sure that you're not distracted. You wanna make sure you're not on your phone or doing something else or watching TV. If someone comes to you and wants to have a conversation or communicate, especially if they tell you it's about something important and you know that you're not able to have eye contact with them and stop what you're doing in order to have communication at that time, it's almost better for you just to tell them now is not a good time, let's pick a different time where we can have this conversation because I wanna be able to give you my full attention rather than just trying to have a conversation when you're not able to really look at them and pay full attention and really let them know that you are looking at them. Now when I say look, I'm not only talking about eye contact but I'm also talking about body language. We communicate a lot with our body language more than just with our eyes. If you've ever been out in public and you've looked over and seen a couple at a table, you knew that they were having a fight. You couldn't hear what they were saying, but you could tell because of their body language. When you're communicating, and to communicate more effectively, when I say look, I also mean you wanna look open, you wanna look receptive. So you wanna smile, you wanna lean forward, you wanna open your arms, let them know that you're interested in what they have to say and you're open to hearing it. Don't lean back and cross your arms and be looking everywhere but at them. It's really annoying, they don't like it and you're not gonna be able to communicate effectively. So looking is really important, not only with your eyes but also with your body language. You wanna look receptive, you wanna look open and you wanna look directly at the person you're trying to communicate with. The second thing is listen. Now, you want to make sure that when you're trying to communicate more effectively, you're really listening to what they have to say. And this is important because later on, the last step is repeating. You're going to have to repeat what they've said. So it's important that you really listen. Don't think about what you want to say. Don't think about the things you have to do. Don't think about other things. Think about what they're saying. And this is especially important if you're involved in a conversation or some communication that is maybe a little bit volatile or heated. Don't think about the next point you want to make. Listen to what they're trying to say. Really pay attention, slow your mind down, and really listen to what they're telling you. The third thing is you want to validate what they've just said. Now, you can't validate unless you really listen. So it's really important that you've really listened first, and then you want to validate. And one thing I want to say about validation, when you validate someone, it does not mean that you agree with what they're saying or you agree with their point of view. I want to make that really clear. But it is really important that we all feel validated, we all feel heard. So let's say, for example, that someone's telling you about the bad day that they had, and maybe they tell you that, a situation happened that they didn't agree with and it made them really cranky and then they had a bad day. Maybe you don't agree with their point of view. Maybe they, you think that they were wrong. Maybe you think they're blowing it out of proportion. Now, if you wanna communicate effectively, you don't tell them, oh, you're a drama king or a drama queen or you're blowing it out of proportion or you're not right. You wanna validate what they've just told you. So you would wanna say something like, I'm really sorry that happened to you or it sounds like you had a really rough day. That's just letting them know that you're empathizing, that you heard them, and that you are validating what they've just said because it's gonna open the lines of communication even more. Now, the fourth thing that you wanna do is you wanna ask some questions about what they're telling you. You wanna ask some open-ended questions because that'll give way and give you opportunity for deeper, more meaningful conversations. So, for example, if you're in a position where you interview people for a living or you're in a position where you've had job interviews, you know that the best interviewers and the best interviews you've been on are interviews that encourage you to talk about yourself and they ask you open-ended questions. I have conducted a lot of job interviews and I never conduct a job interview where the majority of the questions are closed-ended where the applicant will just answer yes or no because I know that that doesn't show me what kind of communication skills they have and it doesn't let me know anything about them. So you want to ask questions so you can find out more about the person, more about their situation because it also shows that you care and you're really interested in them and that goes a long way 
in really helping you become a more effective communicator. Now, the last thing is that you want to repeat what they've said to you. Now, this is important for a couple reasons. The first thing is, again, it really shows them that you were listening and it also can help you diffuse situations that you may have where maybe you're having a conversation that's a little more volatile or a little more heated. A lot of times if you just stop and say, I heard you say X, Y, Z, is this what you meant? It can really diffuse a situation and can give the person time to kind of step back and think about what you've said and really say, oh no, that's not what I meant or yes it is, but I shouldn't have said it that way. So just taking that pause and repeating back to the person what they've said really can help you diffuse some negative conversations and it can also make sure that you've heard them correctly. If you've ever played the game telephone as a kid where you take turns and you whisper something down a long line of people's ears then the last person has to say what they thought that the first person said and oftentimes it's nothing like what was said originally. That's what can happen in conversation especially if we're not really listening. When you say, I heard you say this and you repeat back to the person that was speaking what they've just said, it gives them the opportunity to say, well, no, that's not what I meant or that's not what I said. And they can really clarify the thought that they were thinking or the point that they were trying to make. So it really makes your communication clear and there's no room for misunderstanding. So that's why that's really important. The other point that I wanna make when we're talking about opening up lines of communication that have been closed, if you've got people in your life that you've wanted to communicate with, but maybe you've lost communication or maybe the communication in between you is strained for whatever reason, and you'd like to reopen those lines of communication, that can be a little bit more tricky. But you know, one of the examples that I can make is with your kids. Now I've got boys that are teenagers now, so obviously our relationship and our communication is much different than it was when they were younger. So learning, and I guess I would say relearning how to communicate with my kids now, now that they're older and they have different needs and they're at a different point emotionally, has been a learning process and sometimes a challenge. And so one thing I'll tell you about that, if you're wanting to reopen lines of communication that have been closed, a really great way to do that is to take a genuine interest in the things that the person that you wanna open the communication lines with is interested in. So sometimes I will sit down and watch my boys play video games or I will watch a show that they wanna watch even though I have no interest because it shows that I care about them. It shows that I'm interested in having some communication and remember that sometimes nonverbal communication is even more powerful than the communication you have verbally. If you do something nice for someone or you spend time with someone doing something that they know that you're not interested in, but you're doing it to show interest in that other person, that can go a long way. Now I know right now that can be challenging being that we're all quarantined, but one way that you can open up lines of communication that have been closed, even if you can't physically see the person that you wanna do this with, is through writing letters, sending cards, doing little things like that to just let the person know that you're thinking about them, that you have an interest in them. Be genuine, give the person compliments. Let them know that you love them, that you care about them, that you are really interested in reestablishing communication with them. A lot of times you don't know, but they might have been dying to have this communication with you, but maybe they don't have the courage or they don't know how to reopen the lines of communication and that's gonna be up to you. And the last strategy about this that I'll tell you, what I would do, and I'm not telling you you have to do this if you're not a person of faith, but I would definitely pray about it. We all know that there are some situations where the lines of communication have closed off that really require divine intervention. And I will say that because I believe that sometimes just praying about a difficult relationship or situation where you wanna reopen those lines of communication is what you really need to do. And I think that will really help you in that regard. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments below what communication techniques you're gonna to use to communicate more effectively. Next week, we're gonna be talking about how to become more authentic and more transparent in order to deepen the relationships in your life by developing more meaningful and intimate conversations with people around you. So if you don't wanna miss that video, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell button. And I will see you in my next video. And remember to make your everyday ordinary life extraordinary. One of the best ways to become a more effective communicator is to feed people really good food before you wanna communicate because 
when they're eating and they're really happy and their stomachs are full, they'll really listen to you. And I have really learned that right now in quarantine. <laughs> when people effectively communicate, they are able to They, when, when people are able to effectively communicate, they are able to remember what they have to say. Oh boy.